As we gather today, let us remember that we in the Diocese of Northern Michigan acknowledge the sacred land where we work, live, teach, learn, and build community. This land is the territory of the Anishinaabe people. We recognize the repeated violations of sovereignty, territory, and water perpetrated by European and other settlers that have impacted the original inhabitants of this land. We extend our respect to citizens of these First Nations people who live here and their ancestors who have lived here for over 500 generations and to all indigenous people. We also know that this acknowledgement is insufficient. It does not undo the harm that has been done and continues to be perpetrated now against indigenous people, their land, air, and water. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cool and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer? A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples 
and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no towns of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in, in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house, house is worthy, let your, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that town or house. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of, for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before the governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. What you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brothers will betray brothers to death, and a father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, Flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Here ends the reading today. Good morning and welcome to Sacred Space in the Diocese of Northern Michigan. The Diocese of Northern Michigan is the whole top half of the mitten of Michigan. And we are delighted to have you join us today. I'm Arlene gordon -Air. I live in Marquette, and I worship with the community of St. Paul's here in Marquette. There is so much abundance in generosity in Matthew's sharing of Jesus and the crowds in today's gospel. Compassion. He shares so much compassion. Recall the compassion given in healing, in the sickness and illnesses of the body, and the release and the release and gift of wholeness to those trapped in despair and longing to be able to think and to feel and respond in a wholesome and acceptable manner. This gift of listening and responding from the way of love, this is now the mission Jesus calls the disciples to, discipleship and mission with compassion. God in creation of this planet, Mother Earth, gives birth to many communities outside of the human community. And I was thinking about those communities, and in particular, I recall maybe a couple summers ago reading Peter Wolobin's The Hidden Life of Trees, what they feel and how they communicate. It was swept away into another dimension of life. The one story of the community of acacia trees and giraffes 
show me a community which helped feed the giraffes and not be annihilated by the giraffes. The acacia trees were dinner table high for, the, for these tall creatures and, and they, the giraffes, eat well. The trees decided when nutrition had been reached and emitted a scent discouraging further dining. This also gave a warning to other acacia trees, dinner time was over. Or perhaps you have read Braiding Sweetgrass, the indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge, and the teachings of plants by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Of her many stories sharing in the communities of earth, the pecan trees was one, was one that captured my attention and they provided food not only in the form of trees and leaves and leaves and branches for birds, but, but the pecans for the animal life. And these trees were so sensitive in providing for animal life, they were aware of the weather patterns and, and took that information in and knew when to give more pecans or when to give less pecans. They knew when the animal life had increased and they, they knew how life was faring in these woods and when to send, and when to send forth more. It's such an abundant, such an abundant gift. We are given so much in this community of earth and, and it is a generous mentor for life, lived in community and all that supports life. Jesus is inviting these 12 into a transforming life experience. The creator transforms creation every day. Creation trusts the creator. The acacia trees and the pecan trees show me they have a choice and they trust the creator. We are given so many ways to know the creator, to trust the gift of Jesus, to embrace the invitation to be and to do the spreading of the kingdom of God. Becoming a faithful community was what they were called to do, to root this community in service, teaching, preaching, social justice, respect, and caretaking. These disciples will learn and be challenged in this place that is so familiar to them. Jesus continually pours into them all they will need to be and become in this ministering community with an eye of course toward the Great Commission. As Jesus gathers this group, the storyteller gives us the names of those disciples, along with some little tidbits about their relationships and who they are, including Judas labeled as the betrayer. Every day in this, in this life and in their mission and in their learning, Life has expanded. They accept the call to get together and to become the, grounded, the community grounded in faith. When they began following Jesus, they probably were not expecting to begin spreading the, the kingdom of God without the physical, literal physical presence of Jesus. I suspect they had planned that he would always be with them. And they, they had a, always had a feeling that the that end times were far nearer than than to them then were actually not to know when the end times are. And these disciples had to become steep in the guidance and presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's gift of presence, guidance, support, and challenges is an awesome gift. This community of followers are preparing to be sent, to be and to become apostles, to be leaders, to shepherd, to bring in the harvest, Hauled in the overflowing nets. But before Jesus sends them out, he gives them his authority to minister. Jesus empowers them by laying upon them his spirit, the same power to heal, cast out those impediments which get in the way of a blessed life. They are given specific instructions to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the reason was because this house because of the political dynamics of the history at this time, these lost sheep of the house of Israel were disconnected from God's house without access to wisdom and guidance and protection from the Torah or the learning from the rabbis in the temple. Jesus sent these disciples as wit to bear witness, as witnesses to Jesus's compassion and that he was indeed the Messiah. That he was indeed bringing the kingdom of God. They were of the same culture of these disciples. They, they understood them. And so they might be received in a better way than, than if um, later on, if some other 
other disciples came to this house of this um, lost house of Israel. Jesus was not shunning the Gentiles or the Samaritan towns. He himself has visited these towns, preaching and teaching and healing. The lost house of the lost lost house of Israel was an urgent place. It was an it was it could be in exile or annihilation, but it was an emergency. It was very urgent that they that they go. This could happen given the political environment. In their day jobs, these 12 would have had a clear attention to work at hand. This new calling, the work, the work of the heart and the Holy Spirit. It would be so easy to be distracted. And in this new setting, it would be so easy to be distracted, deterred, and be among the lost. As a teacher, I'm retired now. I can recall just how skilled kids can be in distracting you. Now crucial and how crucial it is to guide them back without, without crushing them or crushing their spirit or crushing my own love and your own love for, for, what, for what you are, have been called to do. It is so much easier to see now in retirement, to be guided, trusting the guide. Hopefully it's, these disciples can recall the crowds and the pressing in on Jesus for healing and help even to be seen and known, how exhausted Jesus became doing, to doing what you love and are called to do and be fills you to the brim and overflowing, the gift of life, sharing that life. We must handle with care. The Gentiles and the Samaritans would be touched and known. The journey and others like it are a precursor to the Great Commission. So Jesus is their mentor, just like you know, we have mentors in our, in our jobs and in our ministries. This sending is one of, the, one of the outrageous gifts of love. Jesus challenges the status quo of the current hierarchical system, the necessity for specific training, authority, and approval. That rubber stamp, it says there, they have the authority. Jesus gave them the authority. He imbued them with the spirit. These 12 are being sent into a sea of drama chaos and any number of consequences. They will be accepted and they will be rejected. They will be reviled and cast out and even subjected to punitive legal action. To have fallen in this quagmire of judgment, naysayers and any variety of attitudes and actions, where to spin and spend our focus, energy and, dis in, and despair, Jesus advises these disciples and in turn those who come after, be aware, don't, de don't deny that it's there, be aware. And it's a response for another day and for more training and for more life in community. But this journey of good news unleashed on the world and in the streets and in people's homes is one that for the apostles will teach them to depend on the grace of God their humility and mirroring of the ministry of Jesus and his compassion and love will reveal to the world exactly who they follow. Their actions, grace, mercy, healing, and release will reveal God to this world. How we are community, where we are community, where is church, what is church, likewise an outrageous gift. The Holy Spirit encourages us to challenge the status quo, to discern the guidance of Jesus through the courage of the Holy Spirit, to lead us in the way, to share the good news in the kingdom of God, the mission of the gospel, the work of the people. The church community where I worship completed our discovery process for a third generation covenant group. We read the dream, a collated collection of essays in memory of Wes Frensdorf with his focus on reshaping ministry. Wes Frensdorf was the bishop in the Diocese of Nevada, whose life and ministry were grounded and nourished through the acceptance of the invitation. Will you come and follow me? Will you seek and serve all people? Will you share the good news? Will you love your neighbor as yourself? Will you love yourself so you understand how to love your neighbor? I learned about the life and ministry of Bishop Frensdorf from others in our diocese and how it continues to shape baptismal ministry. These disciples we encounter in Matthew's 
writings today were baptized in the fires of Pentecost and in the presence of the Holy Spirit. I will share an entry from the dream of a litany for the renewal of the church. And with this dream as an example, I encourage you to dream. Dream of a church, dream of a community, dream of the kingdom of God. How will you gather with others to shape it? How will we know the Holy Spirit? And this is where I learned from Henry Nouwen to look to nature when I'm trying to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit or trying to dis- he encouraged us to, as you're trying to discern what you what you think you're hearing, and 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 the Holy Spirit and the, and the voice of the Holy Spirit comes to us in so many ways, which led me back to nature and and what I learned in in Peter Wollobin's book about hidden the hidden life of trees. I love trees, and in um, braiding sweet grass and and that wisdom from the First Nation. And we learn to, to listen to creation. And that can help us so much as, as we look at the abundance of nature and look at the abundance of these gifts and the voice of the Holy Spirit. There are no pecan trees. There's certainly no acacia trees in my Marquette neighborhood and certainly no giraffes. But there are many squirrels and chipmunks and crows and seagulls. And yes, even dust to shake from my sandals because it is not mine to learn from. Be bold, write your own words of renewal of God's kingdom. Let us dream of a church in which all members know surely and simply God's great love. And each is certain that in the divine heart, we are all known by name. Let us dream of a church in which Jesus is very word, our window into the Father's heart the sign of God's hope and design for all humankind. Let us dream of a church in which the spirit is not a party symbol, but wind and fire in everyone, gathering the church with a kaleidoscope of gifts and constant renewal for all. Let us dream of a church, listening to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Oh, mamina.